it's uh, 5.30. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Our first item is our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mr. Vice Chair, could you read our mission statement? The mission of Marshall Public Schools is to educate, support, and prepare all of us <coughs> for success. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? I'll so move. I'll second. Any additions? None. Please vote. Is approved. Tiger Spotlight. Jeff, you want to go ahead and read uh, appreciation of service for Dion? <coughs> On behalf of the Marshall School Board, we would like to take this take a minute to thank Dion Karen for his time served on the school board. Dion began serving as a school board member representative in 2015. Over the past three and a half years, Dion has completed over 135 hours of school board training, which is very impressive. Dion has been a strong advocate for schools across the state by serving at the state level of MSBA Delegate Assembly. Dion, thank you for your years of service as a school board representative. We look forward to working with you as the director of business. Thanks, John. On behalf of us, <laughs> like to give you a little token that one of your kids can knock off the shelf. <laughs> Thank you very much. You want me to lead him? You want us up here? You guys should probably go up for it. Okay, we'll yeah. come, come on down. Come on down. They, they clear up multiple flags and the bright <laughs> You're going to stay, you're going to take it right. I'm just going to stay over here. She got me. Oh, wow. Three pictures. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to having you answer my questions. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Public forum. Now's the time. Anybody in the public would like to approach the board? This is your moment. Moving on to our presentation, our budget presentation. Mr. Lamprick, we always look forward to this. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. This is the 1819 uh, budget presentation. And uh, certainly, uh, encourage you to uh, pay close attention go to the last uh, item on the uh, on the agenda the, well, well the second to the last the, the last one is the chairman uh, uh, you know gets the meeting done with but the one right before that is the last action item which is the approval of the 1819 budget and I would encourage you to follow along um, uh, in regards to the uh, uh, budget book, this 119-page uh, document, which was a team effort as always uh, with uh, the district office staff. Uh, kudos go to uh, Jill Schroeder and Tricia Stelter, Rossano, and, and everyone at the, the district office in helping put that together. And... Uh, also, uh, the administrative team and, and a number of other people that help contribute to uh, the information that's provided to you with our budget uh, book for, for 1819. Um, this is the, the budget book, uh, as has been previous uh, in previous years, is not just a budget. It's actually almost kind of an annual report. Uh, 
Um, the school improvement plans are listed in there, and that's found on pages 13 through 34. Uh, chapter 11, assessment and test scores. Chapter 12, achievement and integration. Chapter 13, a lot of information from schoolfinances.com. And we added another uh, chapter, albeit it's a brief chapter, and that's on VPK and School Readiness Plus, all our early childhood programs. And that you can find on page uh, 59. Uh, I think maybe in the future, something that uh, uh, maybe should happen with this budget book is take all of that stuff out and maybe create another uh, book or report um, highlighting academic achievement and all the things that I just mentioned. So anyway, uh, breaking budget news uh, uh, for the last time for me. Um, no further investigation needed. Everything really in this budget book is as current and up-to-date as it possibly can be. It's based on the best information, based on a lot of assumptions. Uh, there certainly are going to be variables. And even in the interim, when finally decided how, how much uh, we would use for enrollment numbers or uh, on how much revenue we, we might receive for something, what the expenditure might be for something, uh, by the time that the budget book was actually uh, put together, ch some changes were made, you know. So it, it, it's a work in progress. So the, there are a lot of variables. And, uh, but again, it's uh, the information that is best uh, uh, and most current, and we hope that uh, you'll find it good information. Not much news out of St. Paul. Yeah, that's maybe an understatement. Uh, a lot of work and effort with the legislature and the governor, and uh, when it was all said and done, not a whole lot of bills that were signed and so on. Two uh, items that I think we've talked about those that do affect school districts, and they're both good things. One is the TRA uh, uh, pension uh, bill that was passed uh, bipartisan, unanimous, and signed by the governor. It's not just for TRA, it's for some other pensions also, but it'll put uh, TRA and those other uh, pensions on a sound footing. And the, the other good news is that um, school districts will receive basically um, uh, compensation or funding to help pay for the additional 0.21% uh, that, uh, that the employer, that the district is going to have to pay in regards to TRA. Bill, you... Is that for two years, that commitment? No, it's, I think it's over like five years or this, six years, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, and so that is a good thing. And the other thing was in the bonding bill, uh, a lot of talk about school safety. And uh, what it all came down to was uh, $25 million in the, in the uh, legislation out of the, uh, out of the bonding bill. Um, for school districts, half of that will be for the metro area. The other half is for um, outside the metro area. Twelve and a half million dollars, and a lot of talk here just recently as to how that's going to work, and it's going to be on a grant basis. And uh, uh, Scott and I have been been working on that already. And when once it uh, finally is brought out, I think in July, maybe July fifteenth, is that the date uh, when uh, it, the the whole process is is further explained, and 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 the, you can start working on the grant. I think we'll be in a good position. So. Um, not a whole lot of uh, good news, but uh, a couple things anyway. Our school district uh, continues to plan for growth. Um, we are uh, projecting some increasing enrollment. Uh, we're continuing to have uh, diverse populations. Uh, as you're all well aware of, increasing SPED population. Uh, all that means ongoing uh, support and administrative services that are needed to uh, make sure we pay individual attention to all our students. Uh, really the basic tenets of this budget for 1819 are about based on change, based on growth, and based on conservative spending. Conservative spending, but spending that impacts the students as much as we possibly can. We need to certainly look at uh, 
deficit spending, uh, which is going to be the end result of our general fund uh, budget for 1819, at least preliminarily. Uh, but at the same time, we'll do what we can do to have the greatest impact in the classroom. District market share remains constant. On pages six through nine, uh, th that provides in those, on those pages provides a variety of information pieces, uh, including the open enrollment trends and our market share, which is held pretty constant, about 77 to 78 uh, percent consistently, and uh, I think that's a good thing. Certainly, we would want to try to capture more of the, of the market share of students eligible to attend Marshall Public Schools. Um, that's really what our market share is. Uh, it would be nice to get that up over 80% if we could. But anyway, there has not been any trend downward. It's just been a constant trend. And if you have any questions or comments or anything along the way, by all means, uh, shoot them out or like Bill had uh, raised two fingers and uh, was wanting to uh, uh, express something. So I think that's good. So if you do have any, any comments or anything that doesn't make sense of what, I, you know, what I'm saying or something that you see in the budget book, by all means, share that uh, right here now if you, if you can. Technology certainly uh, continues to have a, a huge impact at Marshall Public Schools. Well, really in any business and any ent entity and all, all the things that happen in life nowadays. Um, starting in September, we'll be on our fifth year of the technology device rollout, uh, including servers and the network services that we have. Um, there's really a big upside, and that's all our students have, uh, have their own personal device, and they are being used. Our staff has their devices. Um, the downside is the impact on the capital outlay budget, which I'll be talking about a little bit later, and the general fund budget also, because ultimately uh, that cost of the purchases, and we do a lease purchase, and we try to spread it out over three years, it impacts both the general fund and the capital outlay fund, because it's split in half. Um, I do believe staff needs to continue to have training take place uh, to make sure that we're delivering and using the, the devices uh, because they need to keep up with the kids, actually. So um, the upside is that we continue to replace uh, these devices and stay current. Um, and as I said before, we're uh, looking uh, at having, again, to split between the capital outlay budget and the general fund budget. You recall, was it in February? when you pass the class size guidelines, and now that's incorporated into the budget. I draw your attention to the bottom of page 10 through page 12. There will be a new additional fifth grade section at the middle school, <coughs> and we move the sixth grade teacher to seventh grade, and all that uh, change that took place uh, in regards to our class size guidelines is incorporated in the budget book, and we're we're trying to maintain, as always, low class sizes, especially in the really primary grades, K through four, K through two, and I think we've been pretty successful over the years accomplishing that. Uh, the big question mark always is, what is our enrollment going to be? And we use a variety of methods and uh, uh, trying to project it and be accurate is, is not an easy task. Uh, page, on pages 9 and 10, you'll see the history and, and the projections that we have. We're looking, again, at a slight but steady increase in, uh, is projected in enrollment uh, growth for 1819, and that's just comparing to the ending numbers for 1718. So that's still good news. Uh, enrollment is... Uh, is stable and, and growing. But a lot will change, obviously, between now and when school starts uh, in September. And by the end of September, I think we'll obviously have a, a much better idea of what's happening in regards to 
to our enrollment. So again, that's one of those variables, that's one of those assumptions that the budget is definitely based on and we really don't know until the kids show up in the fall to see what actually goes on. And Bruce, on that kindergarten sections, are we still keeping AIDS? Do we still have yeah. AIDS projected? We still okay. have AIDS for each of the classrooms, the eight uh, kindergarten classrooms. So that actually comes down to 10 or 11 per adult. Yeah. That's excellent. So that's something that we did, you know, a number of years ago that you did or, or approved rather than trying to add a, a ninth section. For one of, the, one of the reasons is we don't have any more room to add another section at Parkside or Westside. We have made some uh, budget enhancements uh, for 1819. As I had previ previously mentioned, the fifth grade teacher, additional fifth grade teacher, we do have a couple special ed uh, uh, teachers in various areas that we've added along with uh, para support uh, uh, services through the, the service cooperative. Um, the girls uh, soccer program this past year was a JV program. This next year it's going to be have a varsity and JV so we're adding a girls varsity soccer coach. Um, another position that is uh, has been created is called the Halftime Mentor Induction Coordinator. Did I get that right? And that will be uh, teamed up with the EL Coordinator as we're make, making some changes as far as how we're structured. And that Halftime uh, Mentor Induction Coordinator, the cost of that is gonna be run through the staff development budget because we've had staff development budget that we haven't been using and it's a, a good and proper way to to, to fund that program. Uh, two classrooms are being added at the middle school. Um, one of them is for this 1819 year. The other one is for the 1920 uh, school year. Uh, we found that it, it was more feasible and a better way to spend our money to do it, do both classrooms at the same time. So that's one of the enhancements that is in fact going to be taking place. And uh, other good news is that additions that we've done over the past number of years, we're continuing to have uh, the ability to fund those positions and pay for those positions. And as you're well aware of, the cost in the general fund anyway for salaries and benefits is around about 83%, 84% of our budget. So that's really where the costs are. We're in the people business, I've said that over the years for quite a, quite a number of years. Any questions in regards to the budget enhancements? <clears throat> uh, the general fund balance is projected to decrease in 1819. Um, I don't have to remind you, but I will remind you that reserves are one time, uh, it's one time money. Uh, once it's spent, it's gone. Um, and I think my experience over the years working with the, the, this school board and all the other school boards, uh, we've been prudent, we've tried to do what's best, and I think we've been successful with that. And we're gonna continue to do that. Um, we'll have uh, uh, at least a budgeted uh, fund balance deficit of about a little more than $350,000. You'll find that on page 80. Um, when you factor in the transportation uh, uh, transfer, um, that would be reduced to about $309,000 as far as a deficit. And uh, we finished uh, the 16-17 year, the audited number, at a 19.55% uh, fund balance in the general fund. And that includes all the different uh, uh, categories, uh, non-spendable, restricted, assigned, and unassigned. Some of that money in that fund balance can only be used for, for specific things. It's not like we can use all of that money for anything. Um, so again, we've 
we finished the year at uh, for 16, 17, 19.55. Our final budget <coughs> for 17, 18 is projected to be at 17.45 percent. And our preliminary budget fund balance for the general fund for 18, 19 is uh, projected at 15.64 percent. And so what is the equation that we use to uh, determine the fund balance percent? Ending fund balance divided by expenditures equals the fund balance percent. So um, on page 82, you see a yellow bar chart really showing the excesses or deficits that we've projected over the years with our general fund budget. A lot of information uh, in, in, is involved uh, and, and presented to you in regards to the general fund and fund balances. <clears throat> More good news. Uh, what is the good thing that continues to grow? It's in its last year of growth. And that's LTFM, long-term facilities maintenance. Um, it started out uh, kind of on experimental uh, stage in 1617. Uh, revenues were increased per uh, student in 1718 and, subs and subsequently in 1819 also they'll be increased. We'll come to a point, uh, I think around $1.1 million that we would receive, that we'll receive in 1819 for long-term facilities maintenance. And it's, it's to be used mainly for deferred maintenance projects. The old health and safety is included. Um, we can't buy any new, uh, new equipment, but we can repair roofs or replace roofs, parking lots, sidewalks, walls, floors, plumbing, etc. cetera. Um, one of the projects that's going to be happening is a carpet replacement at Parkside this summer. And the recently approved LED lighting retrofit uh, project for the high school qualifies for long-term facilities maintenance. I've, I've said this before, but when the legislature um, uh, enacted this long-term facilities maintenance uh, funding, it was a huge change and a very important change. One of the things that also happens is that some of the maintenance costs that used to be in the general fund now are under long-term facilities maintenance. Uh, working with Warren and, and Russ to, to make sure that we code what we appropriately can code under long-term facilities maintenance rather than just in our regular general fund uh, uh, categories. So that is a good thing. I mentioned this before, uh, the capital outlay fund uh, balance is, is being challenged. If you look at pages 83 through 90, that tells the complete story of our capital outlay fund and the related operations and maintenance uh, funds as well. Um, we have deficit spending projected for $388,000. Uh, $388, uh, the projected fund balance for the end of the 18-19 year is uh, we're looking at $432,000. So that's a little bit above what the fund uh, balance guidelines are for the capital outlay fund. So that we're still, still okay. Um, some good news is uh, a number or many of our previous lease purchase agreements are dropping off, uh, like a parking lot, the, the roofing project, the, the latest roofing project, which is, well, I think already four years ago. <clears throat> and uh, we had an agreement with the city on the pumping station and the fields and the, uh, and the fence, and, and that's, we made the last payment on that. So those things are disappearing. So. It gives us a little bit more discretionary use in our capital outlay fund than what we've, what we've had in the past. But we're still having that challenge and talked about the technology that helps uh, drive that challenge. But as I said before, it's a good thing and we'll continue to do what we can do. Bruce, yeah. We still are from a dollar standpoint. What's budgeted is typically uh, about $175,000. And uh, so uh, textbooks have not totally gone away. 
and electronic textbooks. Uh, I think that in some cases is part of the purchase. Yeah. So that still is an important facet of, of what happens. Any questions in regards to capital out outlay? And by the way, long-term facilities maintenance is where we've placed, you know, um, our revenue and, uh, and expenditure in the, in the capital outlay budget. Maytech is uh, serving a, a number of students uh, throughout the year. We just take an average, or at least I budgeted an average of about 60 students for 18-19 for uh, as far as uh, full-time students. Um, but we can serve probably 150 students over that period of kids coming and going. Uh, this uh, past month of May, 13 students graduated. That was close to, I think, a, a record uh, a graduating class. And our um, CNA and welding programs are going, you know, full blast, great guns. And I, that's certainly a draw, not only for high school students, um, but for, uh, for uh, adults. And we've been able to meld that, especially in the welding program, both the high school students and uh, adult learners uh, to, together. So that's a, a good thing. One of the challenges that we continue to have is the uh, daycare deficit. Um, we've been working on it. It's been reduced over the past three years, but we, st we still are not to a break-even uh, place. And uh, I, I, I wish that over my tenure would, we would have been able to accomplish that, but haven't been able to accomplish it. And uh, we continue to have that challenge trying to make the daycare break even. If you look at pages 48 through 53, that will tell the whole story about Maytech budget and all the various information support information. Ah, question for you. Are you having information overload? Not yet, right? Um, too much information? Well, we have both current and historical information in a lot of different areas. If you're following along, you'll see that. Um, and by the way, if you would like to have the budget book uh, printed, we can certainly do that for you, but we left it in the electronic form because I know people like uh, Mr. Swope are really uh, into that uh, technology way of doing things. So, but honestly, if you would like to have a hard copy, no problem, we'll get that uh, published here at the, uh, at the district office. The uh, individual building uh, site information, you'll find that uh, for the four buildings, other than Maytech, Maytech has its own separate chapter, you'll find that on pages 34 through 48, both on, from the revenue standpoint and from the expenditure standpoint, um, uh, not only uh, current information, current budget information for 17, 18, and 18, 19, but also the historical information and the trends that uh, are taking place. It's really, it's all good stuff. It's, it's great stuff. And it's leisure reading too, if you'd like it to be that. So, all right. So what's the department uh, that this headline refers to? Being active and successful at MPS. We have a lot of activity and success at Marshall Public Schools, but the activities department uh, is, is what I'm wanting to share with you. On pages 60 to 65, you get the full picture in regards to our activities uh, department. Uh, participation this past year uh, in middle school athletics, 280 uh, students, 723 high school students. Uh, in, in, in the high school athletic programs. 819 fine arts uh, participants. 124 in intramurals. I mean, those are impressive numbers. And now, as I uh, had mentioned uh, previously, we're gonna have uh, the uh, varsity soccer program, girls soccer program. Out of our total general fund budget, 3.46% is dedicated to activities and the, all the associated costs with uh, activities and athletic programs. 
So I think we're in, in a good place there. And out of uh, our activities budget, almost 25% is uh, supported by fees and admissions and other funding sources or whatever. So there is some funding support that does come forward to help our activities program in various ways. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, buses that are, uh, we have coaches instead of buses that are supported by the booster clubs. And, and the booster clubs in, in a lot of respects provide uh, some additional support that helps make our uh, uh, athletics program and our activities program is as, is as successful as it is, it, and it's very successful. No price increase for 1819. That's our food service program and our food service uh, pricing. Um, we've had uh, a successful program over the years. Um, we have a fund balance that has, has grown by a little bit over each of the maybe the last five years and that has provided us flexibility to buy uh, equipment, replace equipment. We're finding that out uh, whether it's at Parkside or, or the middle school, even the high school, like steamers with the, the, the water condition that we have, we end up having to replace uh, those items. And so that comes out of the food service fund balance and that's a, that's a good thing. And uh, we've had extremely uh, good success with the Second Chance Breakfast Program that started uh, last year in February and has continued to, to be a success. Uh, as I said, no price increase uh, uh, for meals for 1819. Uh, just uh, an update on the past uh, due uh, accounts process that we've had in place that we worked with. Uh, uh, Taher Foods, uh, getting that to, to work and be more manageable than what it had been in the past. Uh, it, it's certainly not a perfect process. But at the same time, we've been able to maintain uh, a, a budget, uh, not a budget, but a, a balance of less than $10,000 owed to the, uh, to the food service and to the school district. Current amount is $9,180. And I'm sure Lori and her... Uh, Folks are going to be working on trying to get that reduced uh, here this month uh, of June and into the summer so that we can start out with even a lower balance uh, in regards to, uh, to what's owed. So I think uh, kudos to them and uh, certainly to the uh, entire food service program. I think that functions very well for our, for our students. Marshall community well served. Uh, Scott, I think uh, this is your time to shine. Uh, lots of programs uh, that uh, are, are together through our joint powers agreement with, uh, with the city, uh, early childhood family education, school readiness, not school readiness plus, there's still a school readiness program, all the community ed programs, driver's training, um, the aid to non-public schools, adult basic ed, after school program, um, support for our parent student connectors, uh, another very important program for, for, for our school district. Um, the Our Schools Today scheduling program, I think we're maybe in our third year of, of utilizing that and, and that seems to have worked well, the Red Baron Arena, et cetera, so on and so forth. And, you know, partnership is what it's really all about with uh, community services and the city of Marshall and a lot of uh, wonderful programs to benefit not only the children of the community, but the adults also. So again, that's a, a, another feather in, in the cap uh, for the, the city and for the school district combined. Was it Dana Carvey? Yeah. The okay, the church lady, all right, well, okay. The, our special ed uh, <laughs> you were a one channel guy or all right <laughs> um, His television is still censored <laughs> <laughs> okay well anyway uh, our special ed uh, program is special and on pages 54 through 59 you'll see uh, all about uh, uh, what's been happening over the years with our special ed funding and our costs. It really tells the story. 
Uh, in the lower right-hand corner on page 58, there's a spreadsheet there, page 58, and you'll see a number of $1,473,165. And that really is uh, our cross-subsidy number. We've talked about cross-subsidy. Basically, it's costs that are not funded through state aid or the federal program or whatever. Yeah, special education is part of the general fund, but it takes away from other general uh, uh, education uh, needs or whatever because we have to pay for those costs. And uh, I don't think anything will ever change in regards to that challenge. I know there was uh, some potential legislation. I think the governor was looking at uh, wanting to uh, uh, boost up the funding for special education in the, eight, in the, in the uh, 2018 legislative session. Uh, that did not happen. And so uh, that cross-subsidy number is, uh, is something that we're challenged with. Every school district throughout the United States has that same challenge, I would say. Um, it's still upsetting. Mandates are made without the funding at both the federal and state level. Federal level yeah. especially. We, we certainly are, and the number of students needing special ed services have increased, and the, the extent the, uh, of, of their needs has grown. And you combine that with, uh, of course, increasing costs for salaries and benefits, and that all contributes to, the, to that cross-subsidy that we have. Um, plus, there's a plus side, and we've all discussed that before. We in Marshall Public Schools offer wraparound services. So mm -hmm. a parent with a multi-needy child looks for a place that they're going to get the services we offer. So we have families that move here because of the special needs services that we provide. That's a plus. Yes. But it's also a drain on the general fund. It's a double-edged sword. Yes. But we're taking care of the kids. So, I mean, you're right, Bill. We continue to be a regional center for providing, yes. providing those services. Um, one of the things that we did make a change in uh, a number of years ago, and I think it was a good change, uh, we're splitting out the uh, reimbursement uh, revenue for special ed transportation. Special ed transportation is basically funded at very close to 100% uh, reimbursement. And so... Um, we've been uh, moving from the general fund to the transportation fund $460,000 to meet the costs for special needs transportation and to help balance that budget out. So uh, that's something that we'll continue uh, to monitor, to take a look at, and, and Dion, uh, you <coughs> might want to think differently about that, but uh, right now we are making that, uh, that transfer from Fund 1 to, to Fund 3 to help support our transportation fund. Um, we used this year uh, uh, a new uh, what if, and it's a, a program, a spreadsheet that came through the MDE for um, special education. We've always had a what if for all our general ed funding. Uh, that's about seven pages long, this what if for the uh, for special, uh, special education funding is uh, a little less than two pages long, and it provided good results. And uh, I'm hoping that it will in fact be correct uh, as far as the results go, because we're looking at uh, a, a significant increase in funding, state aid funding, in our special education program utilizing the What If uh, uh, program. Uh, Using that as data for legislation? No. No, it's increased funding because of that formula. No, it's just our, on, our, on an individual case by case or district by district basis, taking all the different factors uh, that they provide, and working the numbers, and and that's what it came up with. So, okay. that's a good thing. Um, the this funding model that started in 2015 uh, uh, continues to be. I think a mystery for most people, myself included, as to how it works and how we're get, getting reimbursed. But uh, um, I'm hoping that that what if uh, um, 
uh, spreadsheet will uh, provide a little bit more clarity. And at this point in time, it's, it's looking like it's providing uh, some additional funding for the Marshall District for 1819. And I think over the years, I have probably under budgeted in regards to the revenue for uh, special education, state aid, and uh, I, I think this maybe will give a, a much truer picture. Any other questions in regards to special education? If not, we'll go right into the transportation fund. The, the SPED reimbursement that I just uh, talked about, uh, that certainly has been a help. We are transporting uh, preschool. Um, there's more kids uh, still riding uh, to the high school because of the, you know, the demographic changes that we have. Uh, our fund balance target is uh, 100,000 uh, for the transportation fund and right now um, we're forecasted to end up at 484,000 after 1819. And so that may be something that you want to look at as far as a fallback for fund one of maybe not having that transfer um, uh, take place or not as much in regards to the special education uh, uh, subsidy that we received. And so um, as we look into the future, I will have that discussion with you, Dion, um, to talk about that. But uh, right now our transportation fund, which five or six years ago was in, in a deficit mode because of that transfer of the special ed funding to, to me for transportation, that's where it should go, um, ha has helped us out. All right. Here are the basic facts for our 1819 budget. First of all, our total expenditure budget, we're looking at $40,850,860 total expenditure budget, almost $41 million. Our general fund budget, $30,075,593. Um, that for the total expenditure budget, that's a 4.1% increase uh, for 18-19 over 17-18. 4.1% increase. And then for the general fund, that is a 3.85% increase in the expenditure. As I mentioned previously, $350,000 is the um, uh, original uh, uh, number as far as the deficit goes for the general fund. Again, factoring in the uh, transfer that goes back uh, from, from the transportation fund to the general fund, we would be down at $310,000 as far as the deficit for the general, uh, general fund. On page 91, is what you, that is the page that you'll actually approve when you uh, uh, hopefully approve this 1819-19 uh, uh, preliminary budget. Again, there's lots of facts uh, throughout the whole document, and certainly more facts and information in chapters uh, 11 through 13, including uh, a lot of information about our achievement and integration program. Any questions about the main facts of our 18-19 our budget? On page 82, and then pages 92 through 95, lots of charts, tables, and graphs. If you don't like looking at numbers, you can look at pretty pictures, pie charts, and, and, uh, and other types of, uh, of graphs. 74% of expenditures in the general fund uh, are in the general fund. 74% of our revenue is in the general fund. And I'm glad those mesh. If we had 70% of revenue going to the general fund and 74% of the expenditures, we'd have a, a significant problem. Our, uh, on pages 95 through 97, schoolfinances.com uh, has that five to six year projection. And as I've said in, in previous years, I'll, I'll just caution uh, not to take uh, a whole lot of credence in regards to going out that many years. It's good to see, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a preliminary look, but there are a lot of times where it's hard enough or, or difficult enough to project um, what's going to happen in the upcoming year, let alone looking down the line five years. Um, 
as just as a guide for you on that uh, bar chart, uh, blue is the general fund and the red uh, uh, columns are the combination of fund one, three, and five, uh, transportation, general fund, and capital outlay. So if you're a more visual person, uh, take a look at all the different charts uh, that we in fact have, charts and graphs in the budget book. Are we assuming too much? On pages 66 through 69, uh, you'll find all the assumptions that we have. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, enrollment projecting, projection and assumptions really is the biggest one. And keep in mind, this is a preliminary budget, okay? So it is subject to a lot of change um, that will happen before the November revised budget is brought forward to you. Um, by Mr. Karen. So, yeah, it's built on what we feel is best information, most current information, but um, a lot of things do change. Some don't change hardly at all. And speaking of change, the times they are changing. I had mentioned earlier the, uh, the three tenets that this uh, budget has been built on, change, growth, and conservative spending, but at the same time still meeting all our students' needs. And I think we are, and I think this budget serves that. Um, we have changing student needs, diversity, the free and reduced uh, population percentages at 44%, I think, right, Tricia? Um, change has happened and it's gonna to continue to happen. Uh, truly, uh, nothing stays the same. And it's a big change for me, uh, but you're gonna be in good hands with Scott and Dion. They're gonna do a great job. Thank you for listening this evening and over the years uh, for your support and confidence in the work that I've done. I'm asking you to approve this budget for 1819 later on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Have any questions? Yep. He's going to be back. All right, thank you. She's amazing. Non direct consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Second. 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 Any discussion? Please vote. It is approved. Financials. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, we we'll need to approve the bills for the period May June, and the uh, numbers uh, by fund category are as follows. You can see it up on the screen. The general fund: one million four hundred forty-nine thousand three hundred ten dollars. And 25 cents, the food service fund, $144,421.71. The transportation fund, $204,644.39. Community services fund, $27,529.43. Our capital outlay fund, $83,236.64. The debt service fund, $229,073.75 and our Student Entrepreneurial Fund, a huge number of $17.83. That makes a grand total of $2,138,234. And I would recommend, Mr. Chair, the approval of our purchases, bills, claims for the period May, June. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, please vote. Any discussion?
discussions on the information for Treasury's report? Unless you have any questions, uh, I think I've shared uh, quite a bit already here this evening. So, uh, Board forum, board members, anything you'd like to bring up? Just wanted to mention, um, with my resignation, I also re resigned from the MSBA Delegate Assembly. So there's openings there. Um, <clears throat> District 3, Area 8, and I think I was the only representative for Area 8. So if anybody's interested, it's two meetings a year. It's a good way to advocate. So. No taken. And everybody, anybody that wants to sign up for the summer seminar for MSBA, see Trish. Any discussion on the city of Ken taxing? Okay. Move on to the administrator's report. Quickly, I'll uh, highlight a few things from each of the reports. A lot of end of the year uh, information shared in all of them. In my report, uh, <laughs> And Bruce kind of alluded to it in his presentation. We finished the school year with 2,470 students in kindergarten through 12th grade. Uh, that's 30 more than we finished last year with. Uh, and, and this la current last, whatever you want to call it, uh, year is our eighth consecutive year of increasing enrollment where we've gone up, I think, 15.9% or something like that. So. Uh, that's been a positive thing and certainly reflects a lot into what Bruce shared uh, in terms of our history of, of our budgets. Uh, Bruce talked about the bonding bill and some sa school safety grant dollars that are included in the bonding bill. We are uh, anticipating having our application materials ready to go when, when the applications actually come out in July and, and hope that uh, we are one of the first served because we we're one of the first to apply so we'll keep our fingers crossed when we get to that point tiffany's report um she just talked a little bit about the end of the year programs that were held for students and families and and uh, she shared some information about what's going on this summer uh, in the early childhood aspect of our school district darcy's report uh, briefly shared information about the final Tiger Pride celebration and that continued emphasis on being respectful, <laughs> responsible, and safe. And, and they included the uh, Marshall Police Department in that as well. And I think the kids really enjoyed that. In Jeremy's report, he included information about summer school. And I'm assuming that we talked about this or that this was talked about in June, but we do have free breakfast and, for, and free lunch for all students up to 18 years old from the Marshall community. Um, and I know the first couple weeks have had a pretty good turnout based on what we heard uh, at our admin retreat this past week. So uh, that's a positive thing. Mary Kay reported on the staffing updates. I think she has 15 staffing changes this summer, maybe more. Uh, we're seeing a lot of movement in all of our sites, but uh, I guess the timing just worked out in the middle school. Uh, Brian shared some interesting information about the video production class, some highlights that they did this year. So if you have an opportunity to, to take a look at those, that would be a good thing. Um, for Mr. Remy's report, uh, he shared some participation data from this past year. And, and again, we saw, um, I believe, over a 70% overall participation rate in activities in athletics, which is, which is certainly good. We know that students who are involved in activities do better grade-wise, stay out of trouble, come to school more often, and all of those are certainly positive things. Um, Michelle's report, it was mentioned the 13 spring graduates. I think Bruce mentioned that. And she also shared information about each of their plans. And she kind of highlighted on something that hopefully in July I'll share more information about, that, but that the... Uh, spring NWEA results from Maytech and really all of our sites were very positive in terms of the growth that students saw in, in their RIT scores. Um, and Amanda shared information, uh, timeline of state accountability and assessment results. August is going to be a really busy month as we transition into the new ESSA accountability system uh, in Minnesota. So hopefully you had an opportunity to read those reports. 
you. Moving on to our board action items. We have uh, the first one is approval of the student school board representatives. Motion to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? We will have three this year, so it'll be three times as good. Please vote. <coughs> is approved. Approval of the student school board representatives. Let me just do that. Okay. I, I'm hitting the right button. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <coughs> you change the color of that one. Can we change the color of that one? <laughs> Oh, approval of the 2018-19 literacy plan. Do you have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Discussion. Hearing none, please vote. It is approved. Approval of the QCOMP annual report. <coughs> Motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, just a couple comments. I think you've seen this before, but uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to look through this yet, I think uh, I'd recommend it. Kind of talks a lot about all the aspects of the alternative teacher pay or QCOMP in Minnesota and what we're trying to accomplish and, and really what the Department of Education is looking for us to verify, which we then respond to their questions so it's uh, it's good stuff Michelle Noriega puts it together and, and we all kind of contribute to it but it's just a good reminder of uh, how QCOMP is different and, and uh, what we're trying to accomplish very good please vote it is approved approval of the signatories on the official depository accounts do we have a motion Motion, do we have a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, please vote. It is approved. Approval of the signatures for the OPEB Trust Fund. Do we have a motion? Motion, do we have a second? I'll second. It's open for discussion. Hearing none, please vote. It is approved. Approval of the 2019 budget. Motion so moved. To approve. Okay, I'll second. Open for discussion. Maybe we can keep your retainer to come back and present. Thank you. All right, we'll call for a vote. On that he did a nice job or on the actual motion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. And it is approved. Thanks, Bruce. Anything else for the good? <laughs> 